Welcome to this meeting of the Temple City Council for uh, a workshop on Thursday, April 7th, 2022. It is currently five minutes after four. First item is to receive any public comments for those that have signed up. There being none, we'll move on to um, item two of our work session, which is to uh, discuss is maybe needed any regular meeting agenda items for tonight's meeting. Council or staff. Anything? Tim, I have two different yeah. comments once the question. Uh, on item number D, which is the adoption of the contract for the security system. I just want to congratulate the chief on all the work he did to help put that together and to meet that effort. Mm -hmm. And it's a great thing and congratulations for getting it done. Thank you. It was key <laughs> and purchasing and legal and it's a great team effort. And then I had a question on item K. And that is the uh, change order number one to the parking garages for 900,000 for electric. One question is will that delay the project? Secondly, what, what's it about? Why wasn't that done? Why, why is that change order? Would you uh, mind giving a brief overview of that item? Yeah, so when we went through uh, initial construction for uh, the two garages, part of uh, what was planned is that the overhead electric for uh, in the alley uh, at first and third, between first and third, would, uh, would be underground for the first street garage, and we would be moving towards underground in uh, the city center area. City center area is is in good shape, but the first and third piece of it is still there and uh, still there, overhead. still there overhead. So that interferes then with with the placement of the garage right next to the building. Can't build a garage. Can't build a garage if the electric's there, and so we have to get that moved underground. It originally was a separate project, yeah. and uh, through a series of delays between uh, delays we had with Encore and and internally that project got moved back where it was going to be ahead of the garages then it started getting even with it and it started kind of late that garage uh, process so in an effort to speed everything up we're change ordering it into the garage right. so that they can get going and get it underground and start work so will that delay the first street garage we're we're yes there will be some some level of delay we're still having discussions about what that level of delay is with our our garage contractor um but there will be and we have seen some delays already because they started the fourth street garage construction and the original schedule had fourth street starting and then 30 days later first street starting so we're already into that delay period right now with the first street garage do you have any idea how long or is it too early to tell? It's there's still a couple of uh couple of items that need to drop to make sure that once we give the go-ahead <laughs> and can start scheduling their folks to move forward, <laughs> and then depending on the timeline that they give us to do their part of the work, that then could push it back further one direction or pull it in a little bit. So we're the, the contractor initially gave us a 11 month delay and construction of the first street garage but we're their schedule shows something a little bit different so we're trying to work through those um is it 11 months is it six months is it four that's, is it that's five? what we said five yeah <laughs> or dealing with not towards it exactly <laughs> yeah. okay thank but you. 11 months is kind of worst case scenario I hate to say worst case scenario, <laughs> but, but I would hope so. Okay. And just a couple of additional statements. The change order itself is not going to delay the project. The work has to be done for the project to right. move forward. And the change order is the most um, efficient then vehicle for us to begin the, um, the work that needs to happen so that the garage can move forward. So the change order isn't delaying the project. It's the need to put the infrastructure underground that um, mm -hmm. is holding the first street project up. And the change order only represents the portion of the original project that is necessary to move forward with the first street garage, but does not um, represent the entire 
originally um, contemplated scope of the work. But this is new expansion. All of the work. So, it, it, as David said, this this previously was a standalone project for both garages. Uh, for the underground electric. Oh, okay. So it was a it it, it was um, an effort to beautify and help redevelop downtown, not just to relocate the utilities out of the way of the of the garage, okay. but really just because overall we have the reinvestment zone in the city has um, city council has committed to putting um, much of the uh, electric infrastructure in downtown underground. So it was a standalone project. Okay. Um, this part of it needs to happen um, in order for the first street garage right. to move forward, but it won't, this change order won't accomplish the full extent of the original project. Well, I just knew both garages were scheduled to be built uh, okay. together simultaneously, and I knew nothing had happened on first, but fourth was moving along. So it is, and that well, maybe that's part of the reason. I was just curious how we got. Okay. That's the only question that I had. Yeah, um, but through all of that explanation, that's not. It doesn't sound like that's a new nine hundred thousand dollar expense. That's just <laughs> moving some money around, or is that a new nine hundred thousand dollar expense? It's it's part of the, the that particular. Um, work is covered by the budget that was set aside for the scope of the underground work, but the full scope of the underground work would not come into the budget that was set aside. So there will be a, ch a choice in the future whether that's all you do and you and you stay within the okay. budget yeah. or you go back to do the full scope at some later time, you'll have to add funds to the project. And that's an undetermined amount. At this point, right. yes. Particularly, we ran into issues when we start uh, <coughs> converting buildings one by one from an overhead connection to an underground connection. Uh, the the price of those specific conversions, building by building, when we started pricing it out originally, came in very high. So that's really what drew down the scope of that project to say, okay, we we can't do as much as we could have before, you know, and you can blame that on supply chain or pricing or uh, any number of things. The, the, the dollar per building to do that service changeover was much higher than we anticipated. So that drove, drove some of the scope throttle down as well as just the need to, let's get this done quickly so that we can get the first street garage rolling. I think there were eight to 10 service Changes that needed to happen. Like 14 or 15? About 14 or 15. Yeah, I think that it comes to the nine. Um, also, was it December the DSA was approved for like 800 and something thousand? Mm -hmm. Now that the scope is with Encore, y'all approved in December, the scope's sh shrunk a whole lot. So that amount um, is on about 200 and something thousand. It's in, it's in that agenda item. But you authorized eight hundred some thousand, but we only need now two hundred and something hundred. In addition to the up to nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Council, anything else? All right. Let's move on to item two, which is to receive departmental updates from housing and development and transform to transform to. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So, um, as I start, because I know we're short on time, uh, Brittany's going to give you back a little bit of a goodie bag. So, this is department update for the first half of the year. This is not working. Oh, there we go. All right, so our home repair program is doing really well. We currently have 14 clients in the intake and assessment uh, step of our process. Two clients in part five income verification, which is really that deeper dive into their income for CDBG purposes and requirements of HUD. We have three clients that have been referred to outside agencies, such as Hill Country Community Action, some of our, our partner agencies, and they're in progress. We have three clients that are currently being um, assisted by Citizens for Progress using our 
CDBG funded home repair program. And 12 clients currently approved for the home, uh, the homeowner assistance and reconstruction program. That's the home funded program. So um, that leaves us with 29 clients that we've completed already in FY22. So we're rocking along. We're working with Citizens for Progress, Habitat for Humanity, and Rose Wings Foundation, along with Hill Country Community Action and some of those other agencies as well. So on Citizens for Progress, the new executive director, Bobby Arig, you guys got to meet him, I think, a couple of council meetings ago. He's been doing a really great job working on getting their organizational documents completed. And I think we're in the just the editing phase of, of all of those, and then they will be done. And he's also looking at finding additional forms of revenue, alternative revenue streams, so that we can build up that bank account and get them um, ready to accept home funds as a CHODO, which is our ultimate goal for Citizens for Progress. But they're working in that direction really, really well. Our rental reinvestment program, this is a CDBG funded program, is also uh, moving along. While not as quickly as I had hoped, I think we're working the kinks out though. Um, the web page is up and the application is available online. We've had 14 applicants so far, and that says none funded as of yet, but we, we approved one yesterday. So we finally got an approved applicant and we're super stoked. So. Um, as I said, I think we're working the, the kinks out of that. And we're actively working with marketing and communications to get the word out. And we're targeting specific property owners as well. What's the max contribution from the city on that? 5000 per address. Is it, and is that dollar for dollar? Yes. One to one. Yes. Okay. And it's reimbursement based. Good. Yeah. What's the criteria for targeting specific property owners? We have been working with property owners that have rental property that needs improvement. So we're really trying to work with those folks that we feel want to make improvements to their properties and they just need a little bit of additional financial help. And also working with the coach compliance team to, to identify some that they feel would be um, good candidates for the program. Good. So yeah, it's been, Great. it's definitely been a team process with Transform Temple. Great. A little update on our COVID-19 programs. We still have a little bit of funding left through our CDBGCB funds, and we're using that to house the homeless who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 in hotel rooms. But we're also still doing rent and utility assistance with that funding as well. The TRAP or the Texas Emergency Rental Assistance Program through TDHCA has closed out, and we finalized that last year, end of last year, I think November-ish, and help 30 families with rental assistance through that program working with the United Way. So that was really, really successful. Other CDBG related accomplishments, we um, released the Homelessness and Mental Health Strategic Plan and that is on your agenda for tonight's meeting to um, pass the resolution to enter into that services agreement with our consultant who we're really, really excited about. I think he's gonna just do a fantastic job not only does he have amazing um, experience and qualifications, but he also has a, a huge heart for the homeless. So we're really, really stoked about it. We're also working with MRB Group to um, it says develop new plans for the CFP Community Enrichment Center, but we're essentially done with the plans. We're just doing some final punch list items and um, getting ready to put that out to bid. We are having some conversations internally about the direction that we want to go because uh, Bobby Aaron, the Citizens for Progress Executive Director, has identified a rather large grant that could help fund the, the um, construction. So we're sort of thinking about timing of, of that grant and, and when we want to move forward with the RFP process. We're also working on our substantial amendment for the Building Temple Together grant fund. We're just in the the point of waiting to hear back from HUD or not hear back from HUD about the substantial amendment, but that has all been submitted to them and the ball is in their court. So we're in the short rows of that. All of our CDBG funded programs are currently fully underway. The housing improvement program, which we've talked about, the crime prevention program has been doing much better this year. The code compliance program, demolition program, and then of course the building temple together fund. 
Other major accomplishments, our neighborhood party trailer is ready for rentals. We advertised it and I think within maybe a week we had all but two months reserved for the party trailer. So it has been a huge hit and we're really excited to get that out to the, to the public. I think our first rental is in May because we're putting in some fixtures inside the trailer to hold the tables up and the chairs and stuff like that. We're also um, finalizing our home maintenance academy. Our first cohort has been chosen. Um, classes will begin in April, although now I think the, um, the, cl the class members have said that they would rather have a one day class and knock it all out. So we're sort of looking at some different options for that. We do want to accommodate their schedules, um, but we are, we're finishing up the details for that. And then we did finish our one page brochure for developers that outlines all of our development incentives. And that is ready for distribution um, readily. Other major accomplishments with our Love Where You Live initiative. While we didn't do all of those in the last six months, I did want to just show the progress that we've made with that program and just sort of outlined all of them and um, just applauding you guys for helping us move those along. And of course, the rest of the staff were working so hard to get them all completed. Upcoming plans for the Love Where You Live initiative, we'll start with that. We have TMED that's in the final phase of completion. I'm hoping to put the finishing touches on that really soon and bring that to you for um, consideration. Jackson Park District is the same thing. We are final. We finalized the first, the final draft of the plan, and are about to start filming the um, the final draft presentation. Erin wrote an amazing song that we're having <laughs> recorded. We can't wait for you guys to hear it. And um, so that will finish up the Jackson Park community outreach aspect, and then we'll take those those recommendations back to the table and make those final changes before presenting it to you guys. We're also working on the garden district and then Bird Creek will be our next district to start. Other plans for us, we are continuing to identify developers that might be interested in building in Temple. There's been a lot of talk recently about a shortage of housing. We wanna to try to find those developers who are willing and able to come to Temple and build housing at an affordable price. So um, we're, we're beating the streets and the bushes for those folks and hoping that with the, the new programs that Erin that is working really hard on with the community development program and the grants, that that will be a great incentive for them to come. We're also continuing to work on our Market Loop mural. Um, that's been coming along really well. We've had a lot of great participation from volunteers. They've been just sort of working at it when they can. And um, so we're really happy with the progress. <laughs> We're hoping to get it finished up this month and have a large volunteer event scheduled for April the 21st to finish that. Bryn had a really great idea of taking a picture of the artist with their Yeah, I love that idea. Park. That maybe one to the kid that drew it yeah. and the artist that, that painted it. Oh, that, that. Yeah, we that would be super that. fun. Yeah, we'll totally do that. We are also working on retooling our Neighborhood Leadership Academy. We did present that to you guys as a sort of long, drawn out, um, multi-month um, project, and that did not find a lot of traction within the community. So Bryn, in her infinite wisdom, had, an, had another great idea to maybe shorten it, truncate it into more of a workshop or conference style program. So we're working on, on developing that idea. We're also working on our citywide volunteer program. We have, have secured the software, it's called VOMO, and it's, that stands for Volunteer Mobilization. And it's a really cool web-based program that will also have an app with it that the volunteers can use to volunteer for different um, projects. And then they can also sort of clock in and clock out, which will really help with our record keeping and our volunteer appreciation. We're also continuing with our grant program and meeting with department heads to try to identify additional grant opportunities. Our housing resource center, if you guys recall, we opened that right before the pandemic as a way for our agencies to meet with clients here in Temple that, that may not have office space here in Temple. And that just, because of the pandemic and just because of the, 
the nature of things, it hasn't really been utilized well. So we went to them and asked them, how, how can we accommodate you to better serve our clients? And they said, create an online access point for your clients to, to do our applications and things. So Brittany's been working on identifying a grant to hopefully put in some computer systems for the clients to use to, to fill out those applications. And then we, our staff would help them through that process. We're also looking at a new platform for neighborhood watch programs and um, hopefully with PD's help, we're doing some initial um, investigation into some programs. Up to this point, it's been done through Nextdoor. While Nextdoor has, has its benefits, it doesn't match our neighborhood districts boundary-wise. And there are some that are really wonky and, and some that are really tiny. And so we really want a, a platform that we can customize to our neighborhood districts and then promote within the community as the neighborhood watch platform. And of course, like I said, with Chief's help to make sure we pick the right one. We're also coordinating the team up to clean up events, dream day events and um, neighborhood engagement just to identify those coalition leaders. We still have quite a few neighborhoods that are lacking those coalition leaders. So we're trying to come up with some creative ways to get out into those neighborhoods and get people excited about getting involved. And then finally, uh, we're working with area nonprofits to do home buyer education readiness classes. In fact, we've got one tonight at the historic post office. And so we're excited to see how many folks come for that. And that's my presentation. Any questions? Is that all? <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is really exciting to see how we're really reaching out in grassroots neighborhoods, you know, bring people into the whole process of the city so we can all work together to make it better. I mean, that's what I see the whole so awesome. Well, we couldn't do it without your support. We really appreciate y'all. The Market Loop mural is very popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I told Brim we need a park across the street <laughs> so we can see it better. Yeah, that's been fun. Yeah, see, I'm going to pick on a spot a little bit. Can you yeah. just tell council, uh, give them a brief update on the Launch Temple program? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So Launch Temple is a an entrepreneurship program mm -hmm. that we started as a part of the Rotary Club of, of Temple South and the Rotary Club of Temple sort of partnering together with Temple College to offer um, small business training for entrepreneurs, either existing businesses or startups, people that are just wanting to own own their own business. We had our first class Tuesday night and it was full. 15 people signed up and 15 people showed up and Temple College absolutely rolled out the red carpet. They provided us with a computer lab and a classroom, instructors, the whole nine yards, speakers that are going to be amazing. And um, they're doing all of that for free. The Rotary Club of Temple and Temple South both contributed to the subscriptions to Live Plan, which is the online platform that the students are using to build their business plan. And essentially, each class that they do is another section of their business plan. So at the end of the eight week training period, they can click comp compile and it will give them this beautifully finished business plan at the end. Then we're, we're also going to match them with mentors. If anyone's interested in being a mentor, let me know. Um, the mentors will commit to six months after they're finished with their class to just sort of walk alongside them, help them with you know, any sort of business loans or applications that they need to fill out, any sort of landmines that they might hit you know, as they're getting their business going and um, just really providing them with that support. We also have a microloan funding partner called Kiva.org. And it's actually a crowdsourced microloan organization. So um, the criteria to qualify for those loans is a lot less stringent than what it would be for a commercial bank. And um, it's crowdsourced. So there are investors that sort of uh, contribute into the microloan fund. The small businesses are able to apply. They do have to pay them back. They're not grants. They do have to pay them back. Um, but then the money goes either back into the pot for other small businesses to take advantage of, 
or the investors can pull their money out. It's it's really just kind of up to them and how they want to, to use that as their investment opportunity. There is an interest rate, it is super low, um, but that's, that's sort of how the fund grows. So really, really cool, we're excited. This is our first uh, year and it's just been a breeze to put it all together. The program was called Launch My City and it was created by a Rotary Club in North Carolina and they just basically put the entire program out for other Rotary Clubs to use. So really all we needed to do was just customize it to Temple. And with the college's help, and we couldn't have done it without them, but with the college's help, it's just been a dream. We really what kind of um, small business plans are being developed for what types of businesses? I was so impressed. It's just such a diverse group. We have one gentleman that works in sanitation at Scott and White that has developed this new way of sanitizing surfaces with a mister that he wants to take out to churches and, you know, contract himself out to sanitize surfaces with it. We have a young lady that has organic and vegan skincare products that she makes at home and she's wanting to build her business and, you know, make it into a, an Amazon level, you know, production. We have a lady who owns a, um, it's not a, is it, is it a cemetery when you just bury the ashes? Crematorium. Kind of, but it's like a natural area where she's planted trees and, and plants and shrubs and stuff. And she's gotten a license to where you can put your, she came to is carry leadership. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So she's there. <laughs> Green burials, I think is what yeah. they call it, but I don't, I think it's a cemetery. Okay. Green okay. Green burials. Yeah. She said you're able to, because of the, the nature of the place, you can be buried with your pet. Mm -hmm. And it's like the only place that you could go to be buried with your pet. So this is a place pet. here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's on Heidenheimer road, but it's what? in the city of temple. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah, so really diverse group, really diverse group, really interesting. Yeah, I think they're going to play really well together, you know, just kind of play off of each other and learn from each other. So it's going to be fun to watch. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking. Sorry to put you on the spot with that. But... How long is that program? It's, it's a 10 week long program. Uh, the first week, which we had this week, is orientation. Right. Okay. Eight weeks of classes and then graduation. So when's the next one? Uh, next Tuesday. They're all the Tuesday next, nights. For the next oh, session. for the next. I think we're going to do them annually. <laughs> I think it'll be annual. Well, it just sounds so good. I mean, it's going to I thought you were asking when's the next program there. <laughs> <laughs> Not that she didn't have enough dinner. I know. <laughs> That's great. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Bow time in, you're up. Bow time in. So just uh, just like Nancy, I too brought uh, goodie bags. <laughs> Koozie, um, except they're they're not bags and uh, they're, and they're not them. goodies. You could. Thank you. And I did not I buy. I just lost my glove. Did not get them for staff. Y'all can call it's Ricky and purchase them. Y'all need gloves. <laughs> I just got a shovel though, so and that actually would be helpful. <laughs> I need them. Well, there you go. Thank you so much. Sure <clears throat> oh, so I have a shovel. Oh, I got my way to do that. Well, I, I think they're <laughs> under fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I did buy those out of my pocket. So oh. if, if you owe anybody, I get a receipt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get crossways with purchasing for buying gloves outside of the <laughs> outside of the thing. Good. I'm glad. Actually, they're kind of nice gloves. So uh, I'm like, jealous. <laughs> let's get Brenda to use those. <laughs> um, so just like Nancy, this is a uh, first six month of this uh, year. Okay. Um, and. Uh, <coughs> Starting off, just uh, how we're laid out in Transform Temple Code Compliance. Tom, raise your hand, please, or stand up. That's uh, Tom Dickerson, our code manager. Uh, abatement and projects are under Chad, y'all, under Chad. And then the one surrounded in blue is parking, and our brand new parking manager, Mark Jesse. Mark is. comes to us from University of, uh, most recently, University of Texas at uh, uh, San Antonio. Yes, the health center. center. Yeah. And has 20 some odd years in parking, is that right? 
So he knows more about parking than I knew there was to know about parking. Um, anybody care to know? <laughs> and he went uh, to his first project meeting this morning with Spa Glass and the engineers and some other folks, and uh, they are already feeding him information. So he's been a great resource. This is his second week. So he came back every day the first week and then came, <laughs> back, came back the second week. So I think we're batting a thousand so far. Yeah, but he heard about the delay this just now. <laughs> he, I think he probably was he not did. lying a little bit of time just to, to get up to speed. So uh, very briefly, and y'all can read this. I'm not going to read it out loud to you. This is what each one of those kind of uh, sections of Transform Temple does. Abatement does the mowing and demolitions, a uh, lot, of, lot of that, and we'll have some numbers coming up. Uh, projects is, are the guys you see in the uh, Toros driving around downtown and also do a lot of maintenance on uh, uh, zone projects. That's really where we started with zone project kind of maintenance and cleanup, and it, it's expanded from there. And then finally, parking. Uh, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, having not had a parking manager before, understanding we really need to focus on it. With David's help, we have, and, and also with the Dixon plan that we put together a couple of years ago, uh, we have a checklist of items that we're working through. These are some of our big ones is uh, like how funding or, or cost levels for parking, what are we gonna do? How's that gonna work? Getting our two hour parking back up and running. Uh, and then we're also hoping Mark can help us in the future with some of our design choices on new buildings or whatever. He, he at least has some experience there uh, working with uh, public works and whomever. So projects, this is what they've been doing, part of what they've been doing. Uh, we currently, I say we have a vacant evening position. We did when this was, I put this together. Now we have two vacant evening positions. Uh, but in general, we have Monday through Saturday, Saturday coverage most days, uh, 6 to 8.30 p.m. So Monday, it's 6 to 2.30. Saturday, it's noon to 8.30. But other than that, we're on the streets six days a week and covering a vast majority of the day. They've done 20 board ups. As you can see here, there's Michael Duke hanging a banner for the holidays, uh, Christmas decorations. And I included this photo just so y'all could see what we're talking about. We work with parks to hang banners all over downtown and other somewhat parks. That's all over the city, it seems like, for a lot. And uh, we, we've kind of carved out who does what as far as Christmas decorations. That's a whole trailer full of reeds right there. So, uh, by the way, I, we got an email today that I shared. I very seldom get emails, but I shared it with both Heather in marketing and, and parks. Somebody who's lived here since 88 sent me an email. Why me? I don't know. Thanking us for all the good work downtown. And she loved the Christmas decorations. And boy, I, I sent that out quickly because we don't get those often enough. And it's very important. And I sent to my team and also to parks. It, it's, it's a big deal. Uh, also working on the Good Neighbor Program, we assist uh, Nancy's team with that by hauling tools out to people. That's where she hooks volunteers up with people in need to take care of their lawns. So we don't have a code issue with those people. So that's that's been really successful, I'd say. And that's about to get cranked up again. Okay. Uh, Chad also is assisting with the city center and the garage projects. Uh, almost daily, he's getting a phone call from somebody asking a question or who do I call or we're missing a manhole cover, can you help me kind of thing. And so we put them in contact, or he, I say we, Chad does, but puts them in contact with the right people. Tool Landing Library. So this has really been a big deal. We started this based on the tool trailer for events that we started several years ago. Um, and then we started a tool library using some of those tools. Um, so for this six months, um, y'all can see the numbers there. I'm not gonna read them out. Uh, but we are getting consistently items checked out. The vast majority of them are yard items. In fact, we've decided to buy another cultivator. We talked about it today. We've got two. We're going to get a third because uh, people, I guess, are really into gardening right now. So uh, the last, the March uh, numbers are wrong. We have five new patrons, Teresa told me today. So uh, that's growing. And then because once again of marketing and some, I guess we were in the paper or on TV or something or Facebook, something, we got a bunch of calls already this month. So these numbers are, are much larger already in April. Doing the dumpster drop, which Nancy's team ran for a long time or we worked together, I guess. 
And she said, I'm tired of doing this. Y'all do it. Uh, so, so anyway, we still do the dumpster drop. Uh, we backed off. We were doing it every two weeks, which just was too much for staff, especially during since the same crew does this as does our mowing. And so uh, we got behind on most last year. So we didn't want to do that anymore. So we're doing it monthly and we've uh, got the calendar online. Uh, we've done 10 events uh, over all oh, that can't be dumpster drops. If we're doing it monthly, chat. Anyway, uh, with uh, almost two tons per event. I believe we've done 10 events. I can't believe they're all dumpster drops. We did some extras. Okay, we threw some more events in there. Okay. Uh, anyway, almost two tons, so nine, almost 20 tons total of trash uh, in those dump, dumpster drops or other events, and that's a lot of trash. So here's the big one. This is These are new numbers I've never talked to you all about before, uh, and uh, Brennan Tracy said, you need to be more specific about this. So since 2017, when we started our infill program, which is basically waiver or reimbursement of some fees, of permitting fees, et cetera, and then supplying with a roll-off. So kind of a minimum investment, and most of it's just way back cost. We've done 22 projects. Of those 22 projects, uh, Laura Tai in, in finance, and we really appreciate her help with this, um, went and looked on Belcad and the assessed, appraised, whatever. The value on Belcad was uh, $250,000, $252,000 beginning. At the end of these projects, most recently, that same property is worth on Belcad, $2,265,000. So that's a two mil, over $2 million increase in property value for those 22 projects. And Wendell, I checked my math on percentages twice. That is a 799% 700, <laughs> increase in property value. That's very impressive to us. I, wasn't, I didn't quite believe it. So I kept asking and looking and those numbers are solid. Would you be a little bit more detailed about the infill project? Yes, ma'am. What what exactly? Just well, um, just pick one and tell tell us what it is exactly. In general, pick what, it one, is, what is this right here? They're all similar projects. And I, Susan, can I show you my two examples that are coming up? And then sure, you can absolutely. That's fine. Any. So we get an application, it's approved uh, or not approved. Most of them are approved. They have to be in one of our districts. These next two projects, which are not all, uh, part of those 22, not included. Here's one at 604 North 13th. This is uh, L Enterprises. It's right down the street from your house. That's Caleb Longini. That is Caleb. And he is on the Building and Standards Commission and another one. This was $108,000 in 2021 Belcad dollars. That is the before picture. That is the after picture of the same house. It sold, I said last month, it would be month before last now, I guess, for approximately $450,000. So that's the difference in the house. So what, what did we do? We waived permit fees. We oh, supplied a roll off. Right. Uh, if we can do some cleanup, we did. But the, the owner. <laughs> that does not count against my time. <laughs> so, I, live, I live down the street. I mean, that's right by my mom does up here yeah. every day. <laughs> Are you happy or not? No, I'm happy. Okay. okay. I, wish I, had about 10 of those. I wish I had about 10 of those to sell. Yes, that's a. He did a great job. He did a great job with this house. And I've been inside this one. Uh, it looks sharp inside. So we're just waiving permitting fees. Well, that's so you speak. say just. Well, but, do you know what I mean? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay, so. Oh, yes, thank you. If there are mowings, which can really add up, we mow the oh, yes, yes, We yes. will reimburse them after the after the project gets a uh, certificate of occupancy. And that can add up. That makes a difference between, sometimes people won't buy a property because there's $5,000 worth of mowing liens on there. So if they pay that five grand and then finish this and they're part of the infill program, we will reimburse them the five grand. It's, and I say we, I mean Tracy. It's permit, so can we can waive permit fees, we can waive water and wastewater tap fees yep. if it's for new construction. We can waive 100% of um, lot cutting liens, mowing liens, 50% of demolition liens, and provide uh, free roll-offs, uh, free roll-offs to waive the charges for the roll-off. And we can provide some in-kind services if needed, 
like uh, clearing, doing some clearing. I don't know that we do that very often. We've helped clear some, but no demo but stuff. That's not the, the most common. And um, when 2017, did we, I think we established the program yes, in 2017. Ma yes, ma'am. So um, it's been five years. It's been very, yeah. very helpful because it, as Buford said, it doesn't really. There's not really a budget impact in terms of an expenditure outlay. It's more of just foregoing, you know, potential revenues. But the the, the value of that is really low compared to the um, results that we're seeing in the neighborhood. So uh, absolutely, I just uh, I'm I'm going to be a Scrooge here. Um, could you flip back to the picture that you just had up? Yeah, are we? I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. Why is it? Why is it we're helping somebody have a three hundred thousand dollar profit to encourage redevelopment in the neighborhoods that we have neighborhood planning districts in? So this is this, I mean, this is a great, a really good story, um, and I think uh, I think a lot of the ones that you'll see, most of them that you'll see, are not quite as. Um, large homes as this one. Um, I mean, if you go back to your uh, map, if you don't mind, you'll see the the vast majority of them are in the Ferguson Park area, that more East Temple. Uh, yeah, sure. And so, so those are, yeah, those are more, uh, That that's where uh, I think probably we started for the most part. In fact, I know that when you first, first, yeah, yeah, when you first adopted the program, it was limited just to maybe just Ferguson. I can't even remember if it was. Crimson. It was that small area, it was just, just Hamilton area. And remember. then when we established the Love Where You Live program, you allowed us to expand it out to all, all eighteen neighborhood planning okay. districts. So. Um, I understand what you're saying, but there the impact in in all of the areas helps us encourage the redevelopment that we're seeking through our Love Where You Live program. I don't know that anybody expected that kind of increase no. either. But we um, don't know how much money he had to invest to bring it right. Through. Right. So it's still a good investment. Yeah. Because it really no, and it's out. good yeah. the neighborhood. I I. It, I just felt. No, Susan, I was trying to show, and excuse me, but I was, I was trying to show these two are not part of this. So that $2 million increase does not include this. Of course, you picked the one part of this that I wasn't really ready to defend. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You put that up. I didn't no, no, I, it's totally my fault. I, I should have thought through this better. Bryn would have. I did not. Um, but I think this is a, a success story, too. I. Let's say we we in in kind services or or way put three or four thousand dollars into this. We helped turn this around. This we are a part of it. Yes, I, I I'm I just got uncomfortable. Sure, but thank you. Hmm. I think Brenda did a better job explaining it than I did. Thank you for it. And not only I mean I can only speak to this house specifically. Not only that does it do wonders for the um, neighborhood aesthetically, but it was, um, let's just say the previous tenants weren't good neighbors. So that's kind of a double win for the neighborhood. My brother has a story about this house. You should ask him about it. It's a great. I will. Okay. I don't Thank want to repeat it. It was, Sorry. A, it was a two story duplex that's now been converted into a single family house as well. So that's, you know, it looks nice. It's, it's really nice. It's inside. really, cool. yeah. And the, the infill program, similar to the strategic investment zone grants, as well as, all of our economic development programs, they're not need-based programs like, you know, what Nancy and her team work on in terms of, um, you know, focusing on lower or moderate income households. They're really about achieving the redevelopment, the reinvestment, or the economic impact right. for the community, not, not to incentivize something to happen that either would not happen otherwise, or if it did happen, the timing may be longer right. than, than we would like to see. So closing the gap to help um, make that investment sooner and, and make that a choice that um, a developer or right. a property investor owner uh, would like to make. So most of our economic, most if not all, I think all of our economic development programs are not, you know, 
they're not based on the, the, the income or the need of the, um, of the recipient, but rather the impact that that project can have for furthering the city's goals. Right, and this is a neighborhood need versus an individual need. Okay. And it's, it, Tim's point is, is good. Thank you very much. I'm sorry to be a Scrooge. You brought up a portion of this that when Chad and I are involved in, in supporting these, that we don't always think about that question. And it's a valid question, and thank you for bringing it up. Oh, sure. How was that? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> oh, sure. Good try. So, let's do one more. Uh, this was 502 North Much 9th. Better. This was the one that uh, it sat there for a long time. Uh, our crew was mowing it. They heard a noise inside. Uh, we called PD, went to investigate. There was a uh, an older gentleman inside who uh, was unkempt. We thought it was homeless. It was not. It was the owner. So we helped the owner get hooked up with services. They they got him into a home. Dealt with Chad. Spent months talking to his family and everybody else. It did a great job. Uh, this was bought by Happy Karma Homes. That's correct. And uh, went through a couple of different people. Uh, they fixed it up. There it is, fixed up. Uh, sold in January for approximately half a million dollars. So Susan, whatever questions you had about no, the last No, no, no questions. <laughs> but this was a thorn in our side. No, 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 you're fine. This was a thorn in our side for over two years. Yes. Uh, roof leaking. So we think this was a success. Nobody had stepped in. And we finally found the right people and were able to help them turn this around. It's gorgeous. It's I toured that house before they started working on it. And that very front wall, that brick wall was just, Standing there, and I'm like, "What? What's holding up this wall?" And she said, "Hope." And that was in 2018 uh, when we, I, I guess, when we found the gentleman, Mr. Chandler. Yeah. 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 No relation to Brian. Were you still these on? Well, he had water on, but it there was a leak between the house and the meter. So every time he wanted to get water, he had to run out to the curb, turn it on, get water real quick, run back out, and turn it off. And Nancy can tell you that's not the only person we've addressed. No, it's like Nancy that. showed us that, yeah, you and he had a bike. He would ride around the neighborhood, the door of the Explorer backpack, which is kind of creepy. But um, I don't think he had a vehicle, did he? I, there might have been one in the garage. No. I don't know. He wasn't driving. He didn't have a vehicle. Is he okay now? He's in a, last we checked, he was in a veteran's home in El Paso. El Paso. Mm -hmm. And we talked to his son and the, talked to his family. It was, Chad really, Chad really did some social, uh, some social work there. He did a good job. All right, moving on. Unless, no. Uh, abatement crew mode city lots 261 times. We do not have 261 lots, but we do have to mow lots the same lots over and over and over. Uh, I'm not going to read all these numbers to you. It's it's a lot. Uh, other than tires, good lord, tires. So event tires are probably either from one of Nancy's events that we partnered on or uh, the dumpster drop. 863 tires, if you can imagine those just sitting on the street that we got rid of them. And then off street are either what our crew or code picks up. Signs, these are the we buy houses signs or for sale or whatever signs on telephone poles. We got 303 of those. And then we have four CIP demos upcoming. I think that's for uh, P Ridge, Avenue C, and then 24th Street. Ah, just right there, like I said. Uh, this is a city owned property that we've been aware of for a little while and we were able to kind of tuck it into one of the projects. So that's coming down. Uh, we just, is that what we opened today? No, that's that's advertised right now. Sorry, it's advertised for, it's out to bid. Code compliance did two billing and standards meetings this year, had three orders uh, to demolish, three orders to secure. And then we spent approximately $42,000 for demolition. Some of that $42,000 was remaining demos from last year. So it wasn't just three demos. Uh, we've also working with Nancy's team and the UBO to get information. We are, uh, they are letting us know when they have voluntary shutoffs. 
and we go out and re-inspect them. Actually, Kirby does, and then gives us the information. We will red tag them if we believe they are below, substandard in the sense that you cannot live in them. Not necessarily for demo, but so you can live in them. Um, <laughs> thank you, Kelly. By the way, y'all's meeting starts in five minutes. <laughs> uh, and we've sent 60 complaints to court. Uh, in, in uh, So that's 10 a month, I guess. Never had districts, Nancy covered. Here's case count uh, by uh, type of case. Uh, over the past six months, these numbers track. Obviously, they get lower uh, during winter uh, for high grass. That's that first column. Uh, but the other ones are maintaining the junk and debris and the other ones. Code case by comparison, this is 21 to 22. Uh, if you all recall last year, the majority of that 546 had to do with high grass. It was a rough year last year, and we were mowing up until <coughs> January. Oh, to get caught up, yes. From last year. So uh, we're and it's cranking back up right now. So these numbers are not bad. Plus, in March, we put on a new code officer he's been there two i guess we put him on in february and he's just now coming on into his own moving forward uh working with purchasing on mo contracts and parks for that matter uh and mo's in general uh we're gonna have some uh enforcement and new construction last in new construction sites last year we had a bunch of complaints from homeowners you get a bunch of people coming in from out of town and are not liking the site some of these sites so working with public works uh, and uh, their enforcement and our enforcement, we are taking a real close look at new construction sites. Uh, also enforcement of those three chapters, 14, 37, 21, uh, parking, uh, uh, nuisance, and uh, uh, substandard structures. Next six months, following up on all cases, continuing our building and standards, uh, chapter 14, 21, uh, and we're getting our uh, coordinator, uh, Brittany Griffin, she has taken the code compliance class or code enforcement class and she's going to test to become a code officer or licensed code officer in the state of Texas. So when people call and say I need to speak to a code officer, she can say you got him, buddy. Um, and uh, projects in the bank will continue with CIP demos, continue, of course, to focus on MOS getting really cranked up. And department as a whole, we're going to continue with the mapping of the databases of uh, neighborhood planning districts. We felt like that's been a huge success. Also starting in-depth research on property with overdue liens and reoccurring mow orders to see if we can get some of those cleared up. What's the problem? Why are you not mowing? You know, should we figure out somebody can get that property? Continuing parking research with uh, Mark over in the corner there. And then we've onboarded the parking manager. We already spoke about that. And then back to this slide, just all the things that we are wanting him to do. I think that's it. That is it. Any questions or did y'all get those out already? Tim, you got two minutes to cover that. We can do it. Thanks. It's going to take me two minutes to uh, read in the executive session. Thank you all. Thank you. No, Good thank you all very much. We appreciate y'all's support. Okay. Real quickly, we're going to... Um, Move into executive session to receive and discuss a brief a briefing regarding certain economic development prospects and potential. Thank you all for attending, by the way. Potential uh, real property acquisition or sales pursuant to Section 7 Code 551072 and Council may meet in third session to deliver the purchase exchange lease or value of real property at deliberation and open meeting. We have an ethanol effect on the position of the governmental body and negotiation with a third person, discuss or deliberate commercial or financial information, receive from a business prospect that the governmental body seeks to have locate, stay, or expand the area of the city of Temple, and with which governmental body is connected to the government negotiation or to deliberate the offer of financial or other incentive to such a business prospect. No final action will be taken. Ms. Myers. You're up. 